Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Meg. I don't know how you found me, but thank you for even clicking on this video or whatever video it is you're watching of mine. Please comment what you liked about the video, what you'd like to see next. Don't forget to give it a like and subscribe to my channel. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So today's video, guys, is pretty much similar to last week's edition of the Untold Murder. However, today I wanted to do something similar because a lot of you guys on Instagram actually said that you'd prefer Unsolved Murders to Conspiracy Theories. Um, again, I don't want this video to be too long. I just want to skip through it, get to the, the good bits of it. So give it a big thumbs up if you like it. Comment down below what you'd like to see next. Not that anyone ever does, but yeah, I'm trying to get on with the video, guys. So this video is actually about a, a man that was found in the 1st of December in 1948. Now, he was found on Somerton Beach in South Adelaide of Australia and this man was found by a boy who was riding a horse along the beach. I think it was with his friend and he actually saw this man and he carried on about his day with a horse and then on the way back from the beach, they saw this man again in the exact same position to what they saw him in last. However, he obviously hadn't moved. So... Their initial thought of, oh, he must be asleep, actually turned to something's wrong. And this boy was actually called Neil, Neil Dye. And the man was clearly dead. However, the body was in perfect condition. He was wearing a pressed suit and tie. His shoes were polished and he was clean shaven. So moving on, this man actually had no idea on him at all. And weirdly, all the tags from his clothes were actually removed. So there was no tags, so they couldn't identify like the clothes, the name of the man, nothing. So it was actually determined that the cause of his death was heart failure or maybe poisoning. However, the autopsy actually managed to prove that there was no signs of poison in his system, like in his body. So the last thing that the man actually ate was a pasty or like a pastry, because that was what was in his stomach, which is a bit weird. Like the last thing if you're going to eat. I don't know. Anyway, moving on. So his fingerprints that were taken, they were actually unidentifiable. Now, this means that, that he wasn't in any databases. This man basically had, no one knew him. He wasn't in any system, nothing. And no one came forward to identify this man. It was on the news and loads of people came to view the body from all over the world. However, no one recognised him and no one could identify this man as a relative or a friend or someone that they knew of. No one knew him. Moving on, from the autopsy that was done, it actually turned out that this man had a very enlarged spleen and internal bleeding in his stomach and his liver. Now, there was no signs of violence or poisoning for that matter, so no one knew how this man actually died. So from this, they actually ended up burying the man as just the unknown man from Somerset Beach, Somerset Beach, Somerton Beach. And they ended up taking a cast of the man's like head to shoulders, I think, um, so they could do further research. And if anyone did come forward, then they could identify the cast. So a month later, I think it was around a month later, there was a suitcase that was found at a train station with all the tags removed from the clothing similar to the man who was on the beach and there was a wax thread in the suitcase that wasn't sold in Australia it was actually from the US I think so it kind of shows that this man may have been from the United States and this wax thread was actually used to repair the trousers the man was wearing at the time. So from this, the suitcase actually had names in it that were spelt Keen. Now this was spelt K-E-A-N-E -E and K-E-A-N. Now these were found on the items of the clothing in the suitcase, implying that the man went by this name. However, some actually believe that this was um, a trick and it was just to try and like sidetrack the people that were trying to investigate this case kind of like probably saying like oh like this was the name when actually it probably more than likely wasn't 
About a year later, there was a pocket found in the trousers of this man. Now, the pocket was actually found on the inside of the waistband and it was like a hidden pocket. And in that pocket, there was a piece of rolled up paper from a book called the Ru Rubia. Rubia? I think that's how you say it. I've got my little note here. Anyway, this book actually wasn't really heard of by many people and the piece of paper actually says tamam should now in english this translates to it is ended so therefore this kind of led people to believe that maybe it was a possible suicide and this was the man's note to say this was the cause of death who knows however moving on from this in july the 23rd eight months later a man shows police this Rubia book that was found in his car. Now, his car was parked near the Somerton Beach around the time of this other man's death. And this man said, I parked my car by the beach and I had the windows down and I went back. This book was in there. I didn't think anything of it at the time until I read this in the paper. And I thought, there's a piece missing out of this book. I wonder if this is the matching piece. And funnily enough, this piece of paper from the man's pocket actually fit in the book that the man found in his car. So this book at the very back of it actually had five lines of letters written inside, which was referred to as a secret code. Now, there was also a phone number written along the bottom of the book as well, just underneath from the code. However, the Australian Navy actually believed and claimed that this code was unbreakable. Now, the phone number actually led them, led the police to a 27 year old nurse called Jessie Jo Thompson, who actually lived like hundreds of meters from the beach where the man's body was found. So from this, on Jessica's interview, she was actually really invasive and she cried throughout her interview. And she actually, um, was shown the cast of the man that died and when she saw this cast she reportedly fainted or very nearly fainted however she claimed to not know this man and basically said that she never saw him before which if you're going to faint from seeing a cast of someone that you don't know come on I mean you put two and two together wouldn't you but anyway, just a bit after this, she actually gave birth to a son who had an unknown dad. However, this son, as he grew older, he supposedly had similarities of the ears and the jaw. He had the similarities of the Somerton man. He had similar ears. I think there was a, a specific part of his ear that was actually the same as the man that was found on the beach. I mean... Put two and two together guys comment down below what you think because for this woman to go from i don't know this man i've never seen him but i'm gonna pass out seeing his cast to give him birth to have him sim like similarities i mean it's tough for you to say you don't know him i mean you'd just be honest wouldn't you so Nearing the end of this video, I'm going to move on to some of the theories that have actually been brought up for this man. So the first one actually comes as a suicide attempt, which was, it will basically explain the note that he had in his pocket. I mean, there was no other reason for that note to be there. However, another one, he says that he was murdered by Russian spies because during this time of his, well, of this man dying, there was actually a spy ring in Australia and... A man saw another man carrying a man along the beach. I hope that made sense. Basically implying that this man saw a man carrying possibly a dead man along the beach. Could have been the Somerton man. Another theory is that in 2013, Joe Thompson was said to have been a Soviet spy and her daughter suggested this as her mom had quite a dark side and for the daughter to suggest this it kind of 
it would make sense like for someone's daughter to say something like this and accuse their mum of something you would kind of think <laughs> do you know what i mean but apparently her daughter said that she would talk in a hushed tone in russian on the phone quite a bit and she was quite secretive and she would also teach english to illegal immigrants i don't know if they were illegal i know they were immigrants that would come into australia and the last theory i have guys is that Professor Cedric Hicks suggested that the man was poisoned, but it was a poison that would decompose shortly after death, so there would be no trace of it in his body. Now, this would make sense, seeing that Joe was, this Joe um, Thompson was actually a nurse, and she might have had access to like rarer poisons that not many people would have access to, but because of her being a nurse, she might have actually been able to access them and like implement it into the man for the man to die. I don't know, but that one makes more sense to me. I think if it was a suicide, then doing it on the beach. I don't want to analyse this and pick it apart, but it's the beach is always considered nice, nice scenery, so it's not a nice place to do it as such, but it's not like in a room on your own, you've got the beach and the sea. The Professor Hicks one about him being poisoned and the poison decomposing before anyone could find it, that adds up as well. But comment down below what you think guys. I really hope you've enjoyed this one. This was actually an Australian one and was different to the last one who was actually a British one. I did try to find some British cases, however, I didn't find it hard, but I got this one again, I know, again of BuzzFeed Unsolved. I'm obsessed with BuzzFeed Unsolved. And this one intrigued me the most because no one knows how he died or what happened. And it, it just fascinates me. Um, if you have any cases that you want me to look at or any conspiracy theories or anything at all, let me know down below. Don't forget to give this video a big like if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel if you want to see my face again. Thanks so much for watching guys. I really appreciate it. And I will see you in the next video.